So I was in the market for a smaller boat. I've got my big boat, which I use a lot for offshore fishing and all that sort of stuff. But the reality is I love everything from trout fishing and flathead fishing all the way through to marlin. And I needed that little boat, but I needed it to be a crossover. I didn't want just an estuary boat. I didn't want one that's just for, you know, light inshore tackle. So after a lot of research and looking around, I settled on the Crossfire 481 from Stacer. And the great thing about boats these days, just like your cars, you can modify them. You can make a lot of changes. And I made quite a few changes on the inside of this boat, which we're gonna run through. And rather than doing the run through of this new rig, the day I got it or while it was very new, we're six months down the track. And it's been interesting because there's been a couple little things that I've changed and tweaked that have made the boat better. So we'll start at the back of the boat, down at the power part, the prop, the motor, everything like that. This boat runs a 90 horsepower Mercury. It's a CT, which means command thrust. And that gives me performance that I need in this boat. This is a heavy little boat because it's got lots going on inside there, which you're gonna see more about. But it's a great motor. It's a 2.1 litre displacement engine. Most other 90s on the market are about a 1.7 litre engine. So you've got bigger cubic inches and that's because Mercury is an American brand and that's the sort of stuff they love to do. It's got all the features you need. You've got your hydraulic tilt and trim and all that sort of stuff. So the 90 horsepower Merc weighs 165 kilos, but down here is the reason for the CT and why I went for that. So what you've got is a standard gear ratio is 2.07. This one is 2.38. And what that equates to is it gives you better thrust in the lower end. So getting the boat on the plane and then keeping the boat on the plane at lower revs. It's also really good because as I keep saying, there's a lot of weight in this boat. So it gives you that performance at the bottom to mid range without sacrificing your top end speed. The other thing I'm running here is an inertia prop. And the one we've got on here is a 14.7 by 16 pitch prop. That's giving me again, great hole shot, lots of thrust and a good mid range planing speed. And that's really important because in this boat, I do everything from trout to tuna and everything in between and trolling at eight knots and doing all that. It's really economical. And in fact, at a standard cruising speed of about 40 Ks an hour, this boat's using about 1.8 kilometers to the liter. Now, when it comes to the trailer, this boat is designed to be towed everywhere and it's already done a lot of kilometers so with that i went the i-beam alloy trailer it's lighter in weight but if you're looking at a boat this size alloy is a little bit more expensive than your gal but on a boat this size if you've got a galvanized trailer you're going to be a little bit heavier not a lot and and it, you know save you a few dollars the main feature you'll notice here however is i went with dual axle reason for the dual axle they just tow much better along the highway and dirt roads and all that stuff that this goes on the dual axle does also serve a purpose. If something goes wrong in the middle of the night and you're on some of these skinny roads where there's not really room to pull over and, and change a tire or fix a bearing or do whatever, at worst, you can take the tire off, strap it up, and you can still keep driving quite comfortably, quite safely till you find a spot to get to to fix it or till you get to the next town. One last thing before we jump in the boat, you'll notice I got it painted gray. The crew at Former Sign ripped all the stickers off. Wes did them all in matte black. The other thing is we've got the U-deck on these rear steps and all up along the gunnels because I do walk along the gunnels a lot when I'm estuary fishing. And the other thing I got put in here is a couple little steady lights. And the reason for these guys is when you're fishing in low light or at night for snapper and things like that, we've got our rod holders, our three ways. The rods sit really flat and these lights actually angle up just on a slight angle like that. So what it does is it lights up the rod and it lights up the tip so you can actually see when you're getting a bite or when you hear that rod scream off, you know, which one's got the fish on it. They've been really, really good, those ones. But if you're gonna get them, make sure this transom actually has a bit of an angle to it so they face up. If you've got a flat transom, you can buy a little chock that will sort of push them out a bit so they face up. I didn't want them facing down to the water. I wanted them just going up like that and that's exactly what they do. All right, so hopefully you can get a good view of what's going on from up there. One of the first things I needed was a casting deck and the standard casting deck on these finishes about sort of here and goes like that. So I did what's called the tournament casting deck. So it brings it back that little bit further. Plenty of room here for two people to fish, but what it's also done is increased the deck storage and that's really important. At this end, it's got a 70 litre circulating live bait tank. You can pull that divider out if you're lucky enough to catch something big that you need more space for. But the idea of the divider is 
you know, in a lot of brim tournaments and stuff, you fish two people, you got your five fish, their five fish, and it's just a, a handy way to do it. We've also got two hatches here and here. You can put your tackle boxes, tackle, food, everything you need in there for your day fishing. This here is actually a little removable cap that you can pull out and you can put a seat up in here. You can put your lean post up in here and I'll show you the lean post in a second, but that's really handy, it's in the right spot. But the thing I really love here is if I open this up, right, we've got another storage hatch. And if I had have gone the non-tournament casting deck, I, I wouldn't have this little hatch. In there, we've got a 24 volt lithium battery from BLA. This thing weighs 21 kilos and it's 24 volts. So I haven't got two batteries, I've saved on weight. The output of this is unbelievable. I can troll for trout on the electric motor for seven hours and use about 45% of the battery in seven hours of trolling. If I'm just estuary fishing, say flathead and brim, you get about five days out of it. So it's really handy. I've got the foot pedal stored there. I've also got the hand remote for the motor guide electric. And then the only thing I can't get to because I've got the Simrad sounder mounted up the front here. And the idea of that is that while I'm fishing, I can see what's going on. I don't have to be worrying about trying to get around there and see what's happening because we've got the active target and I'll show you more with that in a minute. But under here, we've got the Lone Star Marine GX1 winch. It's mounted in under there. It's out of the weather, it's out of the way. I had to do some reinforcing on this bulkhead that runs through here so that the winch mounts to that and it's you know got plenty of strength because this is hauling the boat when we use the anchor. It runs under a roller up through there and out through that hawse pipe. So as you can see, it's very, very neat. This winch has got so much hauling power that it's plenty for this boat. It is, is more than enough, but it's the smallest one they make and it's ideal for these small sorts of tinnies. There's a GX1, two, three, four, the big fours and that are just monstrous and made for a you know, 30 foot plus proper big boat. So, it's given me a lot of space through here. When I got the boat, however, the boat was blank. It arrived at work, the boys at Melbourne Marine fitted it out, but we had no rod holders, it had no wiring, it had nothing in it, so that it was a blank canvas and I could get everything positioned exactly where I want. As you can see, that U-deck top along there so you can walk down the edges, which you can comfortably do because this is a very, very stable boat. And I often just find myself running down the edges you know, generally when I'm snagged in a bit of current and I'm trying to get the lure off, but it's really helpful. It's comfy on your feet. But then you notice here too, probably one of the main features of this boat is I've gone center console. This boat comes standard with a side. You can do center console. And a lot of people go, oh yeah, but if I have it on the side, then I've got all this room here. Yes, you do. But by having it as a center console, you actually gain a lot. I've got plenty of room either side here to work and if there's three of us in the boat it actually gives us heaps and heaps of space to comfortably fish we can move down each side of the boat if you're chasing a fish around or doing whatever you need to do but the main thing this does is it's putting my weight midship okay it's in the center of the boat the console's back far enough that we are right in the prime spot of the boat so we get a really, really good ride. I've had this boat out in 20 knots off Portland in a two meter seat, and it was really quite comfortable. Yeah, I got a bit of spray here and there, but at no point felt unsafe. The boat's not leaning to one side because if I'm here and I'm driving along and the weather's pumping in on that side, you just cop it. So by being center console, the boat is so much more level. It rides so much better. I get better trim out of it and I just get overall better performance. This is the big sports console, so it's a little bit higher. The other thing I did is I got the grab rail modified because I've mounted the sounder up here. It's quite a big unit. I got the grab rail modified. That was it. Sent it to the guys at an aluminium fabrication place and they modified it to this. And this serves a couple of purposes. It gives you something really handy to hold on to, but also it's very, very useful because there's a cover for this boat and this cover you know, sits over this. So it's not pulling down on the sounder while we're traveling. So it's become a really good piece and everyone loves it. If I got two people, one guy's hanging onto that side, one guy's hanging onto that side and it all just works. So for me, the center console has been probably the biggest game changer on this boat. So we've gone from the front to the middle. We've got side pocket storage. Okay, I haven't put rod holders in yet because I'm still not convinced where I want them or if I want them or how I'm gonna do it. And that's a good thing. If you're fitting your boat out, you don't have to do everything straight away because 
quite often, you know, you'll put something in and I've done it, trust me. I've had multiple boats. You go, oh, I'm gonna put that there. Six months down the track, you're like, yeah, I wish I hadn't have done that because it needed to be just there. So just little things like that, you can think about it, you can add them later. So we've got storage, we've got a good ride, we've got more storage under here. And even in the front here, we've got a dry storage, which is really helpful. You know, you put your phones and bits and pieces in there. I've got another little light in there. So there's no shortage of places to store your stuff. On the work side of the console, obviously steering wheel, 12 inch Simrad sitting there. Now this unit talks to that unit and it also interlinks with all my Mercury data that I need. It gives me my speed, fuel flow, all that sort of stuff. Because I've taken up the dash basically by having a 12 inch unit in here. I didn't have room really for the Mercury Vessel View digital gauge. So it's a really handy thing. You can just open your window up here and we can just go straight in. We've got, you know, engine data. I've built a window here. There you go. So there's your, your information that you need, you know, what revs you're doing, your fuel, all that sort of stuff. So it's pretty handy having it all there in one. With the bigger console, it's very, very comfortable to drive. You've got the throttle system there, the steering wheel there. This is for the anchor winch. All right, that's got a circuit breaker on it, which is pretty handy. So right now I can let that anchor down, bring it up, right? When I'm not using it, just so I don't accidentally bump it, you just pop that and now it doesn't work. But also if you did happen to trip it by pulling your anchor when it's stuck, that's what'll pop, then you reset it. All my um, switches run through here, nav, anchor light, all that sort of stuff, bilge pump, super important, especially if you're gonna be fishing this boat out in open water, which is what this does a lot of the time. So very handy. What you'll see here, this one here says depth sounder. Now this switch here is for the active target, which is that big pole there and the transducer here. I'm gonna show you how this works because this is unbelievable when you see it working. However, when I originally fit the boat up or when I say oh, I the boys at work fit the boat up we put the switch up under the gunnel there and you couldn't see if you had it on or off and it's a little bit delayed you know for the power to travel through it till you see it on the unit so what we've done for a very good reason is gone to that switch on the dash which lights up so as soon as that lights up it's light up red there I can just see it okay now I know my transducer's on. The reason you need to turn this off, and if you're getting an active target, you need to be able to turn it off because when you're moving and you've got the transducer out of the water, it's basically cooking it. It's got to stay in the water when it's on. So having it there is really handy. I know when it's on or off and it's just worked really beautifully. Now I think it's time for us to take this boat for a spin. What do you reckon? So as I mentioned before, the 90 Merc is incredibly fuel efficient. Even just cruising along here, 10 k's an hour, we're getting 2.1 kilometers, 2.2 kilometers to the liter. So it's really, really fuel efficient. It cruises beautifully at like 30 to 40 k's an hour, 35 is ideal. And it's a very, very dry boat. And I think that's just because of the weight placement, which I was talking about being center console, a little bit further back, lets that nose ride over chop and slop. And I've been actually amazed how dry this boat is. So we'll just pop her up on the plane. And this is where that CT gearbox does its thing. We we'll just pop it up, right? I haven't even had to give it heaps, right? And we're on the plane. And at this point here, I can even pull it back. See, we're doing 25 Ks an hour, 27. We're using 1.7, oh, two, about two kilometers to the liter at this speed. So it just cruises along beautifully. Tops out at about 58 Ks an hour, which in a boat like this, that's heaps. If I'm ripping around the ocean at that speed, I'm more than happy. The other thing I'll do here, if I just get my sounder while we're cruising along, get the Simrad, touch the screen, just go straight to engine. We've got all our engine data there, 77 litres of fuel in it. There's our speed, fuel used so far. That's what I've used in total since I've had the boat, 450 litres of fuel. So that gives you an idea of just how much I've used this boat in the last six months. So, you know, it shows our economy. It just gives you all the data that you need. Okay, so while we're out here, we're getting towards the back end of the boat. The first thing that you'll notice, I'll just dump my sunnies there, is my seating system. 
We've got seat holes here and I do have actual seats that go in the boat, but for the most part, fishing on my own, and even if there's two of us, and especially if we're lure fishing, we'll just have this. And this is a lean seat. It can go up the front on the casting deck. And the idea of it is it's so handy because you literally, you're taking the, the weight off your knees and your feet and everything, and you're just resting your butt on it like that. It's really handy. And as you can see, it takes up no space. But the best thing of all is if I want the back totally free, pull that out. And we've now got a very big back section for a little boat. So you can comfortably fish multiple people out of this. But I'll drop that guy back in there. There's also another storage hatch here, which I just store my water and bits and pieces in. Okay, and then push that in. So I'll just kick this out of gear for a sec. I said before about how, you know, I wanted to wait to do this review till I've had the boat for a couple of months because there's a few little bits and pieces I've changed. One being the switch on the active target. But one thing I'd noticed very, very quickly in the piece is this boat's got a bilge pump, but for safety and all of that, fishing offshore, I'm like, if I take a big wave, I couldn't get the water out of here quick enough. And I just discovered that from washing the boat, you know, the water would sort of pull through here. So a recent addition is these little scupper holes here and here, okay? And I don't have scuppers draining completely out the back. They actually just drain down into the bilge and they can be pumped out. This has made it safer for offshore fishing, which is your number one priority is safety. And it also allows you to wash the gunk and muck out of the boat, tuna blood or bait and all that sort of stuff. It now flushes out the back. So it makes life so much easier. In under here, there's a lot going on. We've got twin batteries, because we're running two sounders. We've got bilge pump, there's a deck wash, there's live bait tank pumps, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. But as you can see, the boys have fitted it all the way beautifully. We've got your battery switch there. Okay, because we're running dual batteries. <clears throat> that all locks in there. And the thing I do love is just even having this little storage shelf here, you can see I've got my tray of sinkers just there in that box. They just slip in under there. There's another little tackle box there. Now, as we come back up to the top here, you can see there's multiple rod holders. So I've got two here. I've got the two in the corners there. We put those in, they're aluminium it's because it's an aluminium boat. You don't want to be putting stainless rod holders in or you can possibly get electrolysis. But one of the features that I, I got done when this boat was being designed is they come standard with one live bait tank. I wanted two. That's because I'm greedy, but there's a, a reason for that. So both of these tanks work, they pump, they do all that sort of stuff. But the reason for the two tanks is I can store more bait because I want to catch marlin out of this thing. But this is, you know, this boat for kingfish and all that sort of stuff. And down here in Victoria, we get a lot of arrow squid offshore and they are just prime bait for big kings. But also we get yakkers and slimies. Now, the old arrow squid, he's a bit angry. He's quite a volatile machine. And if you put arrow squid with your yakkers and slimies, they will kill them and eat them. So this way we can have arrows in one, we can have other baits in the other. But if we're at a situation where we need to gather our bait in the morning before the sun gets up, we can stuff both tanks. Rather than just having one, we can get twice as many live baits. So it makes your day just that much better. The other thing you'll notice, downriggers, I love downrigger fishing. Whether it's trout, snapper, marlin, kings, I don't care, I love downrigger fishing. And I've got these cannons here. And the idea being, they're really helpful with this little swivel base on them. That this can be then angled out, we can spread them out, we can do whatever we want. They've got the counter there. And already these have caught me a bunch of fish in the last few months, they caught some really nice trout. And I'm hanging for snapper season because I'll be right back into my snapper trolling. Best of all, they lift straight out, out of the way. So if you don't need them, you don't have to have them. But the other thing, I can drop them in my side rod holders, which I've put, you know, up sort of midship of the boat. And again, you know, your boat can be always evolving. And one thing I have noticed is I put the rod holders at the front there, okay? They're great for trolling and all that sort of stuff. But I now know I also need to put a couple more rod holders in and I'll probably put them about here. And that's gonna happen pretty soon because if I'm down rigging for trout on my own, I can quite comfortably be sitting here, just cruising along on the electric, both my down riggers down out the side or snapper or whatever. But when my down riggers are mounted there, I can easily adjust them because they're right where you need them to be rather than having to go to the back or have to go all the way up to the front. 
if I put them so they're pretty well level, I can just you know make those adjustments up and down as I need to be. The other thing is they're out of the way. And even if I'm using them for whiting fishing, I can put the burly pot on it. The burly pot hangs there while we're fishing out of the back of the boat. Okay, rather than having it here where your pot's there and your rods are here, it all ends up in the same spot and you can lose your fish around the, the downrigger cable. So that's just the sort of thought that I've put into it. At the very back of the boat here, you'll see again there's a bit going on. Deck wash, you don't have to do a deck wash, but I love it. It keeps the boat clean. You can keep washing bait and all that sort of stuff as you need to keep the boat tidy. And then the other little piece here is my little hook and slimy tubes. So all these guys run off independent pumps. You know, I want them separate. I don't want everything being shared. So they've all got their own pump. So their own live bait tank, own slimy tube, and then you've got your deck wash. So this is really handy. And I haven't had this boat down off Port McDonald this year chasing jumbo tuna. And because I was on my own, it was much easier to be able to have a live bait bridle rig in the tube, rod sitting there, get up on a bait ball and toss the bait in. I've also gone with red strip lighting under the gunnel for at night. It lights up everything beautifully and you don't lose your night vision. So you've got yourself such a versatile boat. I can fish this in a foot of water. This thing floats in about that much water over a sand flat or you can take it to the shelf and catch a marlin out of it. And that is what I wanted and I needed this boat to do. So the other factors are it's cheap to run. It's just so cheap to run. It's easy to wash, easy to tow, doesn't use a lot of fuel. So the reality is you do a lot more fishing and that's what I want to be doing anyway, especially on days like this, there's a lot more fishing. Okay, now finally, I'm gonna chuck the electric in. I'm gonna show you how this active target works. And you, if you haven't seen one, are going to be amazed. We'll turn that sounder on. Now, my electric in here, I've got a little circuit breaker again. So when I'm not using the battery, all current is cut. Right, we'll drop the lecky in. All right, that little beep was the motor guide saying, yes, I'm on. All right, so electric's in, sounder's on. I'm gonna put the active target in, but this at the moment is in forward view. So I'm gonna adjust this into scout because we're in shallow water and the scout view has that transducer sitting flat shooting out in a cone like basically that way it's really good for your shallow water if you're in deeper water you go to forward if you're in really deep water you can point it down for down but for now we just put this in the water this is one of the gfab poles this is the 1800 length pole and the reason i went the 1800 is because it's not like a bass boat with really low sides it's obviously got higher sides because it's more of a open water and all round sort of boat. So we get that into position like that. You want your pole so that it's straight up and down. And then wherever that's pointing, that's where my transducer's pointing. So now what I've got to do too is the last time I was using this was in the Glenelg River and I was in deeper water. So I had it on uh, forward because it was deeper water rather than scout. But in here we've only got 2.7 metres. So... I'll just anchor us on the electric and that's where your motor guide's so good. Press that anchor button and that's now gonna hold us here. That's on GPS. We're out of everyone's way. And then if I get the sounder here, so this is your forward. So that, that's, the, that's the way the transducer would have been facing. I'm gonna go into menu. We're in forward range 15 meters. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go to there. We're gonna go to scout, okay? So now you can see Right, that's, that's how our, our cone's shooting. It's shooting out like that. And as I said, it's, it's good for shallower water because it's, it's only shooting a beam like that. Right, now we've got range at 24 metres. I'm gonna pull that into 15 because you'll get a better picture at 15. Okay, so this is more like, as my cameraman Clark, he said, who's filming this right now, he goes, it's more like an ultrasound. And that's what it is. It's real time, like an ultrasound. And as I move the handle, I'm moving my picture. Okay, so I'm now panning out more towards the side of the boat. I'm just coming up to these poles, which you can see there. That's a pole right there. There's another pole there. You can see the shadow coming off the back of them. And that's what you'll notice. So when you're 
chasing the fish. You can actually see them moving around, but I'm gonna show you something really cool. Like you can actually see your lure go through the water. You'll be able to see if any fish is following it, all that sort of stuff. And the biggest thing you need to get your head around when you start using this, you see all this stuff and you'll see all these fish and you go, like, oh, there's fish, there's fish. But once you put it in concept of seeing your lure and how big your lure is, you realize that a lot of the fish you're looking at are just little, little bait fish. So when you see something big, you will know it's such a game changer this. Now, I'm gonna just anchor us here, all right? And then I'm gonna grab my rod and I'll show you what a lure looks like going through the water. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a short cast. And this is the other thing. I've only got this shooting out 15 meters, so there's no point to doing a 30 meter cast. So I'll just do a really short little cast here. And where that's pointing, that's where the transducer is facing, okay? But the other thing is you want that pole at about hip height because then you can actually steer it off your hip when you're sort of doing stuff. Okay, and the whole idea is that I can pan around, I can look out to the side, I can look everywhere, all right? But if I keep this just for now, like this, there's my lure there. I just saw it then come in on the screen. And it also teaches you that in most cases, we're all overworking our lures. That's the biggest thing I learned when I first started using it. I'm like, wow, I've been ripping these lures through the water much harder than I need to. So much fun, it's like watching telly while you're fishing. But anyway, that's my Stacer 481 Crossfire with all the bits and pieces on it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you like it, subscribe. And don't forget too, there's also old episodes of Fishing Edge up on YouTube as well. So you can watch that stuff. There's everything from trout to tuna and marlin and everything in between.